Hey guys, Brad here today from the OFAH. This month's lesson is all about North America's masked mammal, the raccoon. In this month's lesson, we aim to answer three questions all about raccoons. How do we identify raccoons? Where do they live? And what do they eat? So stick around as we learn today all about North America's masked mammal. How do we identify raccoons? Raccoons have a grayish body with a big bushy tail covered in five to 10 alternating black and brown rings. Their dark bodies have been adapted to help them to camouflage in the darkness of the night. Their short legs end in narrow hairless paws that look like human hands, and their non-retractable claws, sensitive digits, and sharp teeth make them very capable. These features have made them well adapted to climbing, fighting off predators, catching and eating prey, as well as devouring all sorts of various food they scavenge for. Raccoons have keen vision, and this vision equips them both for daylight activities and for nocturnal wanderings, although they are most frequently seen at night. Raccoons measure from 73 to 95 centimeters in the body, and their tail adds another 22 to 25 centimeters in length. This means they can be from 95 centimeters up to 1.2 meters in total length. Adult raccoons can weigh from 6 up to 26 kilograms. 26 kilograms is the same weight as a car tire with a rim, or a 65 inch big screen TV. This is a ton of weight, but for most raccoons, the average size is between 6 to 8 kilograms. This is around the same weight as a 10 pin bowling ball. Raccoons are known for their black, mask-like markings on their faces. This black mask runs over the eyes, nose, and cheeks, and gives it the look of a mischievous bandit. Their mask-like markings usually develop when raccoons are around 10 days old, often before they even open their eyes. The raccoon's skull is broad, and its face tapers from a short, rounded head with white-tipped ears to their button-like black nose. Where do they live? Raccoons can be found in most of Ontario, except for in the extreme north of the province. Raccoons prefer forested habitat near water, although they can live in a wide range of habitats, requiring only a source of water, food, and a protected area for denning. They may be found in river valleys, forests, on farmlands, and have even adapted to urban localities. Raccoons can even be found in huge numbers downtown Toronto. They usually live in hollow trees and logs, caves, barns, and other buildings, culverts, drain pipes, or the burrows of other animals. Raccoons use one of three types of dens. Refuge dens, brood dens, and overwintering dens. Elm, maple, oak, Basswood and sycamore are good den trees. Their dens are lined with leaves or wood chips, and their den is usually found at least 10 feet or more above the ground. At temperatures below freezing, raccoons retreat to their dens, and they remain inactive until it warms up. This isn't true hibernation, because raccoons will emerge from their dens on warm winter days. Raccoons do not stay in any one den type or at any one den site for an extended period. They do move around. What do they eat? Raccoons are omnivorous and they will consume practically any food item, plant or animal that they can get their hands on. In particular, raccoons prefer corn, crayfish, fruits and nuts but there are seasonal shifts in their diet depending upon their location and the availability of food items. Raccoons are well known for going through garbage in urban areas, housing developments, and campgrounds in particular. Have you ever been camping and had to store your food at night? Raccoons are one big reason for this, as they are very smart creatures who often get into humans' coolers, food, and tents while people are camping. Now that we've learned a little bit about raccoons, let's get into raccoon mode. 
Go on a hike, but do it in the raccoon way. Walk on all fours, or your hands and knees, and be very, very quiet. What do you see at this level that you never noticed before? What do you smell? If you're a good raccoon, you'll be sniffing for anything that smells good to eat. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and comment below. Don't forget to check out the resources section on our webpage. There you'll find free printable resource material like mini lessons and activity pages to follow up the virtual lesson. And please subscribe to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom.